Have you ever wondered to yourself what's the difference between a $5 pocket knife and an expensive pocket knife? Well, in this video, I'm gonna go over that. I have five different pocket knives ranging from $5 all the way up to $180. And I'm gonna try to figure out why this one is worth so much more than all of these. Okay, so these are the five knives that I'm gonna be going over. This is the least expensive all the way up to the most expensive. The first one is the Ozark Trail. It's gonna be $5. And then we're gonna move on to the Kershaw Hot Wire, $15. The Outdoor Edge Razor Elite, $25. And then the Buck Knife 780 Excerpt, $50. And then the Benchmade Bug Out 535, $180. So all I'm doing is just looking them over and just seeing how well they're put together. So the first thing I noticed about the Ozark Trail is that this clip is very flimsy. It's cheaply made and you can tell that in the way that they put these together. Okay, does it open very well? God. Oh, that was hard. Oh, buddy. Yeah, you need a lot of help to get that open. And when it is open, does the blade move around a lot? Because that's important. If you gotta cut something and that blade slips and shuts on you, cut your fingers. I don't know if you guys can see that. Blade is really wiggly. That is not very secure in there. There is a slight bend in that. I don't know, I'm gonna give it a three out of 10 on secureness. Move on to the Kershaw hot wire. So by the looks of it, it looks like it is made to a little bit higher of a standard, like the pocket clip is very tight, very secure. It's not as flimsy and bouncy as the Ozark Trail, which I'm kind of surprised because this is only now $10 more as a function. Oh, that is smooth, very smooth. There's like no effort with that. Yeah, does it wiggle at all? There is some wiggle to it, but it's not because it's loose in here. It's because the blade itself is actually bending because of how light it is. I think it's just cheap, thin steel on here. And that's what's causing that to flex, but I have more confidence in this one if I were to stab something that it wouldn't come down and cut my fingers off. A little tighter to close, but really easy to open. I don't know, I don't know where to put it. It's light, the clip's good, opens easy. Some flex on the knife is fine. It closes hard. I'm gonna say four out of 10. We're gonna move on to this outdoor edge. So this one's a button push. Push the button to the bottom, it releases. You can snap it open. It takes a little bit of effort. This one's cool because it has like removable blades on it. You, you can insert these extra ones in here if this one goes dull. Oh, that is very, very loose. This one might be looser than the Ozark Trail. Number one, it's not very secure when it clips. And then the second reason, these are like just long razor blades. That is, it's just so thin, it just flexes. This casing that the actual blade sets in is not very secure. Can you hear it? Yeah, I think it wiggles around a lot. Yeah, I don't have a lot of confidence in this one. Clip's pretty cheap, very bouncy. I mean, I'm sure it'll hold up, but over time, I think them screws are gonna come loose and then you're not gonna have a clip anymore. I don't have any confidence in this blade. Number one, it's loose when it opens up. Number two, the casing that this thing sets in is loose. And this blade is so bendy because of how thin it is. I don't have a lot of confidence, and if you're gonna be using this for any type of work that's not eventually gonna snap off on you. I'm gonna give that one a two out of 10. So I'm gonna move on to the buck knife. I have had this knife for quite a while, actually. And first thing that went bad on it was the pocket clip. There was just two screws in there. This thing was flimsy itself, and eventually the screws wore themselves out, and I don't know where it went anymore. But it was very fast to open. Um, it's very sturdy. There's not a lot of play in it. I have a lot of confidence in this. If I'm really going to work, because I have with it, that it is not going to come down and snap my fingers. The blade on this one is the thickest of all the five knives, so there is no play. There is no flexion when it comes to this blade. The locking mechanism is very tight and doesn't allow for any play, so I do like it, but I just don't like how long and big it is and how heavy it is. And the fact that the pocket clip wore off pretty easy. One thing about this, there is, there's not a good place to put your finger to open it. I mean, you could put it in this hole right here, open it that way. Or what I do, I just grip it with my thumb and my middle finger, open it, and then flick it open. 
I don't know, I really like this knife. It's a really popular knife, except for the pocket clip. So, I'm gonna give it a six out of 10. Now moving on to the Benchmade. It feels just super, super thin. I don't know what type of plastic that they made this out of, or if this is, yeah, it's definitely plastic on the outside. I mean, there is some grip to it, but not as well as the buck knife. I feel like my hands, if they're like really sweaty, I'd have a hard time, you know, working with this for a while. Um, but the pocket clip is super stiff, so that is good. You don't want the thing going anywhere. I don't see this pocket clip having a problem with staying on long term. I don't think it's going to go anywhere, so. Well, that was kind of unfortunate. I figured that thing would just fly open like the Kershaw, but I guess not. Um, okay, so maybe it's just because it's new that I haven't quite worked it out. Okay, that was a little smoother. I don't know if it's just getting hung up and not flipping open all the way because of how new it is or if that's just the design of it. The release point on the Benchmade is not in the center like the Kershaw and the Buck Knife and the Ozark Trail. It is actually on the side. So if it's open, you slide these two rivets down and that releases it and you can close it. I don't know, that's gonna have to take some getting used to. Uh, there is absolutely zero play in this blade. Zero play. When it's open, it's as if it's just a single piece of steel. It's that secure. There's no play forward. There's no play side to side. There's no flexion in the blade. With this blade being so thin and there's zero flexion, that means that they use high quality steel. So I think that is what makes it so expensive is the blade quality itself and, and the black coating texture on it for erosion. That's what we're gonna find out in the next test is the cutting ability of these knife blades. Just looking it over and the structure wise and the function ability, I'm gonna give it a six out of 10. I would give it a higher rating, but right now it's getting stuck when I'm trying to open it up. I think that it's gonna work itself out in time and it's gonna climb that rank. But right now, I'm gonna put it at either a six or seven out of 10. Okay, so what I'm gonna do here to test the cutting strength of these knives, I have this kitchen scale here and whenever you put force down, it gives you the weight in grams of that force. So I seen a guy on YouTube, you can buy a professional one of these and actually tell you the specific scientific cutting strength of the knife, or you can make one yourself because the scientific one is about $300. But I seen a guy, he did this exact same thing where he had this one and then the scientific one right next to it. And he made cuts and they were very similar in results. So I might as well make one myself uh, instead of buying the expensive one. So all it is, I cut this board right here, cut a slit in it, put some screws. I'm gonna put some uh, fishing line over the top, put it on here and it zeroes out. And then whenever it cuts through the line, it's gonna tell me the grams that it cut at. The lower the grams, the sharper your knife is. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go through and get the baseline of each one of these knives. Then what I'm gonna do is cut on a two by four and dollar them out a little bit. And then I'm gonna retest this to see the cutting strength of them. Okay, so now that I know the base cutting strength of all these blades, I'm gonna try to doll them out a little bit. And what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take each blade and run it across this two by four and cut it 30 times. Hopefully that's gonna doll it down just a little bit and then I'm gonna retest the cutting strength of it and see which knife retains its cutting edge the best. And what I mean by that is which knife cuts closest to the original number that it took to cut. First one is the Ozark Trail again. Kershaw. The Outdoor Edge, Razor Elite. The Buck Knife.
Now to the bench maid. Okay, so I've done all the cutting on the 2x4. To dull the blades a little bit, we're going to see which one retain the closest to the original cut. Okay, so I'm not too surprised with those results. The biggest change there was was with the Ozark Trail. I think it had like 224 grams of difference from the original cut to the last cut. And the knife that proved it had the best blade retention was the Benchmade. It only had a 90 gram difference from the first cut to the last cut. I definitely thought that the Outdoor Edge was going to be the worst because it was just simply just a long razor blade. It's so not a lot of blade retention with that. I mean, I was close. It was only a couple grams off, like 14 to 15 grams off. Another thing that shocked me was that the buck knife didn't hold up as well as the Kershaw did. I thought the buck knife, because not only is it more expensive, um, that the blade is thicker itself, I thought that it would hold up stronger compared to a thinner blade. And the Kershaw, surprised me, came in second place. It had the second best blade retention. So this next test that I'm going to do is a uh, knife tip test. I'm just going to drop the knife straight on the tip. See which ones take the less damage. Okay, so let's look these over. First one is gonna be the Ozark Trail. As you can see, the tip of that knife is pretty flat. It took quite a bit of damage because this steel it's pretty light, it's not high quality steel. Here is the Kershaw. You can tell the tip of that knife is pretty flat also. There's a little bit of rolling on the end of it, so it took quite a bit of damage. Third knife is the outdoor edge. As you can tell, that entire end is chipped off right there. So yeah, that took a lot of damage. This is the buck knife. There's no evidence on the tip of that knife of any damage, so. I'd say the buck knife passed, which doesn't really surprise me because how thick this blade is and how thick the steel is. I would say the Benchmade passed too. There is no damage on the end of it. It's not chipped, it's not rolled. And if you noticed on the drop, the Benchmade actually stuck into the concrete because the steel that's used to make these blades is harder than the concrete itself. So it just penetrated in the concrete and stopped. All right, so the order from worst to best on the strength of the tip of the knife is going to be the Kershaw came in last. There's quite a bit of damage on the end of that. And then the Ozark Trail surprisingly came in third is the Outdoor Edge. I definitely thought that was going to be the worst. And then these two, the Buck Knife and the Benchmade, did not have any damage on them at all. The last test that I done is an anecdotal test. Just how these knives feel in my own pocket and then I rank them that way. So. The worst one came down to the buck knife because it's just so heavy and clunky in my pocket that it's very noticeable. It took up a lot of room and just uncomfortable to carry. This is more like a, I use it for fishing. Just put it in my tackle box, just throw it in the bottom of there, and I'm good to go. The second place, I would have put it last because I'm just, I would never carry this knife at all. It's just not going to happen. Is the outdoor edge. I would put it in last, but it is a lot lighter than the buck knife. And when it's in your pocket, it's kind of what you're looking for. So, something that's light and that you can depend on. And I, there's no way I can depend on this thing. Not for anything. But it is a lot lighter than the buck knife, so that's why I put it second to last. Third place is going to be the Ozark Trail. I've carried this thing a lot, actually. It's not as noticeable as these two, but it's just right in the middle. It is... You can notice it. You do notice that it's in your pocket. It does take up a little bit more room than I like. So, yeah, this is like a... This would be a good knife for like a kid. A knife that you really don't give a crap about. Maybe on a construction site somewhere you're just cut whatever. Wire, boxes, anything that's really going to damage the end of the blade. It's probably going to be a knife for that. But yeah, comfortability wise, it's going to be ranked right in the middle at third place. And in fourth place I have the Kershaw. I really like the functionality of this knife and how light it is. You don't really notice it in your pocket at all. Because once again, how light it is and how high it sets up on your pocket. 
yeah, comfortability wise, it is my number two knife. And hands down, the most comfortable knife. You hardly even notice the thing at all because it's so light and it sets so high up that you don't you don't even notice it. It's really there. And when you do notice it there and you pull it out, this is a heck of a tool. In first place is obviously the Benchmade. The whole reason this video was to determine if these knives are priced in the right price bracket. Is the Benchmade worth so much more than the Ozark Trail? Over $100, $180 more. So I do think that the Ozark Trail is a little bit underpriced. I think this could be $20 knife instead of a $5 knife. I think that the Kershaw is also underpriced. I could see this being around a $30 knife, not a $15 knife. The Outdoor Edge is way overpriced. This thing should be like a one to two to three dollar knife. The only thing that I could see them making it $25 knife is the fact that it comes with two extra blades because the blades that it comes with are absolute junk. And the Buck Knife, is it worth $50 to me to spend $50 on this knife? And the answer is yes. I think $50 is a pretty good price for it. I don't think it should be worth any more and maybe it can go down about the high 30s low 40s range just because the clip just because the clip is a weak point and also that the blade retention is pretty weak and is the bench made actually worth what it's priced at what it cost me 180 dollars i would say yes because the functionability of this knife how easy it is to open how secure it is when it's locked there's no flexion at all the strength of the tip of the blade strength of the actual retention of the blade is by far in just a whole nother league than these knives. This knife itself is going to last you more than all of these knives I think combined because like I said I've already had this buck knife four or five years and the clip's falling off, the Ozark trail sticks like a son of a gun, the tip sucks, the Kershaw is good but the tip sucks too and I don't know how long this clip's also going to last but everything on this Benchmade knife was made with a clear idea in mind. Whoever was making these had a very detailed understanding of how knives worked, and I think this is reasonably priced at $180. I think with good care, this knife will definitely last me probably the rest of my life. Probably something I can pass down to my kids and they can pass down to their kids. As long as it's not being, you know, thrown at trees or something ridiculous like that. But just everyday use, this knife is gonna last you for the rest of your life. With just a little bit of care and maintenance, should have no problem. Would you be willing to spend $180 on a knife to figure it out yourself? I'm telling you, I didn't have a lot of expectations. I definitely thought the knife was way overpriced and overhyped. And when I get it in my hands, I actually feel like how light it is. It, it shocks me. I was honestly surprised of how well this knife was built, quality that it was built with. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I may be doing other videos like this. I might do the Spydercos versus the Benchmades. I might get some other high-end knives and actually do the scientific test. Just depends on how this video goes. If you guys like it a lot, if you guys leave me a thumbs up, comment, and this one gets a lot of engagement, I might up my price tag and get some better knives than these ones. Just let me know. I don't know. Um, with that being said, until next time.